How are you? Great. Nice to be here. I might add piano player. No, 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 please don't mention it. <laughs> I'm not. I didn't know you, but I, 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 normally when people go over to the, I mean, we won't play it, but I, you know, I remember normally when people would, we say it's Glenn Gould's and they'll walk over to the piano. You know what they'll play? Bam, bam, bam. Or bam, bam, bam. <laughs> but you, you, you know, you played something. No, I played the piano a little bit uh, in, uh, in school. Uh, that's, that's, uh, and, uh, when you're studying dance in in Russia, you have to really uh, do at least elementary piano uh, knowledge of piano playing. Why does one help the other? Of course. Well, after all, you dance uh, with the music. You know, you have to really learn how to listen to music and appreciate. Ah, yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. I mean, it is percussive. It is rhythm. Yeah. Just like anything else, you know. I guess the piano would be the best for that, given that it is sort of is a both. Well, and spiritual as- aspects of uh, dancing is is connected to the uh, the music contributes so much to dance. So, how did photography enter your life then? That was a strange story. Uh, it's happened to, you know, I start to photograph uh, at. Uh, probably a late 70s you know photograph my kids the it was a 50 millimeter ca- camera you know like everybody else wants to be a, a sort of a magnum photographer you know a man ray or or dick avedon or something uh, uh, but then at some point when the digital equipment came i start to sort of full with the little point and shoot uh, digital camera and that I remember it was in Dominican Republic we had the summer house there and then you know, I started to photograph uh, a Dominican guys you know with the drinking uh, brujal you know and uh, with the president beer and then dancing bachata merengue or salsa and everywhere you know and the gas stations or dance halls on streets with the you know a, a radio and uh, 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 playing different kind of uh, tunes. And uh, I, I kind of realized I really like that um, unfinished quality of, uh, uh, of uh, images, which is blurry kind of a bit. The parts of it, it's in, uh, in the focus and the rest of it is floating kind of, which is really closer than uh, to dance than frozen image because we, uh, I, I, I couldn't use uh, flash photography, which is freezes uh, image. But I, I'm looking for that mistake into the realization, into the, uh, into the results, which is really uh, comes closer to some kind of dance. The mistake? Well, a mistake because, uh, you know, everybody wants to get a sharp picture. And I start to uh, 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 sort of do the research. And of course, not, I, I was not the first who uh, invented this style um, of, uh, of trying to achieve that kind of uh, 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 results between, uh, uh, between photography and uh, a video let's say you know the movement film uh, let's say that's that kind of trail of of uh, of a dance it's there and of course there were a legendary person in the uh, art publishing world alexei brodovich russian of course you know uh, who was uh, art director of Harper's Bazaar in the 50s. And he was instructor for 
numerous photographers, uh, Robert Frank, you know, Dick Avedon, Irving Penn, uh, uh, you know, really big ones. And he published a book in, in early 40s, I believe, uh, called Ballet. Uh, it was uh, about Ballerius de Monte Carlo, which was at that time traveling around through United States. And he photographed them in this particular, that kind of style, but of course with the, with the film. Uh, uh, yeah. and, uh, and it's a phenomenal uh, 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 book. And, and Edwin Demby, very famous poet and the writer and dance writer wrote this beautiful and interesting introduction to it, uh, to that new style of photography. And now that I'm looking sometimes, you know, sports sections of newspapers and magazines, they use that thing in, in, uh, in the reportage of, of uh, sports. Yeah. You know, now it's kind of very much accepted, even in the in publishing business. Yeah, and and I should be clear here. So yeah, you, when you look at these photos, we have a very challenging job because even though we're being filmed, this is going on the radio. So I'm I'm trying to describe these, you know, these images, and um, you know, when you do look at them, they sort of blur the line between uh, photograph and film, as you mentioned, but also photograph and painting. Um, the 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 the. Um, the artists the dancers are obviously in motion and you know when i was getting in getting ready to talk to you of course i was reading about you and and, and, and brushing up and um you know I, I of course i came across tons of photos of you over your career and it occurred to me that those were all just brief split second moments people had captured because truly to capture what you're doing needs to have motion implied in it i understand that well, but somehow, uh, uh, somehow with this uh, form uh, and this way to photograph, and I, I, I was really lucky to be allowed to attempt, uh, let's say, dress rehearsals when this full costume and makeup, right, uh, uh, you know, v with the permission of company and some of them were my friends and uh, choreographers and uh, a great companies uh, or Merz Cunningham or Paul Taylor or Mark Morris or Martha Graham or uh, uh, you know uh, that I was really close to the performance and then to get uh, a little tighter shot on, on expression of their faces and uh, and something which is traditionally not uh, not one art director of 20 or 30, 40 years ago would accept as a possible shot they can be used. Really? Why not? <laughs> well, because they say, well, it's not in focus. Right. And there's nobody dancing with a leg behind their ears, you know, which now it's really, they think it's... You know, yeah. as higher you jump, as better dancer you are. It's nonsense, of course. Really? Of course it is. <laughs> you know, you see what people in gymnastics do. You know, they're flying, you know, without any help to it, you know, on their own. Dance is not uh, who lifts a leg higher or dance or, or jumps higher. It is... It is a spiritual exercise, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and that's I was trying to capture that moment uh, in, in, in this exercise. Well, here's what I love then. I mean, you talk to me about, um, well, actually, let, 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 let's set, before I ask about it, let's set the scene. So you went to Argentina. Uh, who did you photograph in, in Argentina? Well, I start to uh, uh, go uh, also in the late 70s when the first time I danced in Argentina in Teatro Colón and I stayed for a few weeks. And, um, um, and I, one of the first evenings, somebody took me to my first milonga, milonga hall to see Argentinian tango. And, uh, of course, I, I knew... I, I was I was prepared a bit, but not until until certain extent, but not in that. Uh, you know, I was I was so moved and so fascinated by it. Uh, you know, the tradition which is 
uh, Europeans brought in, in the 19th century to to Buenos Aires, and and uh, the guys start to dance uh, and bring in sounds of band band uh, and on uh, that drag in the in the songs of of, uh, uh, of a tango um, or simple matter just a, a, a music of it and then dance on the streets and there starts by the way men dancing with men people who worked on the, in the port and in the, in the uh, factories and all kind of businesses making uh, uh, making a living you know and then in the evening they were celebrated that they are alive uh, they run away and find a new a, a country with that kind of thing, and the, the, but tradition is so full of restraint, dignity, strength, and uh, virtuosity. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, from that point, I was obsessed. I couldn't dance myself because I really kind of totally d dyslexic. You know, in Hold this on, you're sense. Like, you know, seriously, I don't know how to do two steps, text and two steps. I, I you're a really, cop, you don't. No, but it is. It is not. Uh, that's different kind of. I realized later on that I was actually dyslexic when I was a student. Oh, I was really? a terrible student. Really? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I was when in my. Uh, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, I was uh, less than even mediocre. I had a problem to remember certain things, switching w words, uh, spelling, uh, or numbers, uh, switching. At, at that time, it was, especially in, uh, in Latvia at that time, it was nobody even paid attention. Uh, okay, he's just a bad student, yeah. and that's he's it. He's slow <laughs> or something like that, yeah. Yeah, you know, right, but right, yeah. I, indeed I understand now, and it's still for me. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I have, if I don't really spend some time, let's say, with person, and I, then I will remember perfectly his name, his uh, last name, you know, the main name of their friends, because I, 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 but just somebody says my my name is also. In two minutes, I w I wouldn't remember. Right. You know, I, mean, so, but, I have to make an effort. So I find this really interesting. Is that you are you know one of the most decorated and accomplished dancers of our modern era, and you are. But you know, I should be clear. A lot of this is done in rehearsal halls, and there's you know you're you're practicing, and it's very regimented. And you have a love and a fascination and a. a, a an inability to completely comprehend street dance, you know, like folk folk dance. I mean, I, I find that so interesting. Well, I, I, it is. I realized a couple of years later that uh, that my my interest uh, of of trying to document. Uh, 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 you know those are dance elements. It's actually rediscovery the dance for myself. I understood why I, uh, in fact, love to dance and I and and love to see other people uh, uh, dance. Which is why. Uh, because that internal need, it's that urge which people cannot control themselves. Uh, like people love to play golf <laughs> or go to opera or uh, go to philharmonic or go to the theater mm. because they prepare the, the day, day, night before they already uh, try to imagine how the uh, uh, the singer will sing or actor will portray uh, uh, his own Hamlet. You know, uh, uh, you know how this dancer would willingly uh, show their soul, and that's the most important. That that fragility. And uh, transparency is the most important in any arts. And you forgot? No, this. Uh, uh, you, you said well, I, I was remembering. Yes, reminded. because you know, I, I, I danced. I started to dance uh, professionally when I was like ten years old, 
in the uh, as a practice in in a choreographic school uh, we were performing in uh, Riga, Riga Opera House you know at my first uh, not the Nutcracker you know and then Sleeping Beauty and those like little pages we, we were uh, we were uh, extras in operas you know and uh, uh, and then you get little you know sort of je ne sais quoi, you know, this, this sort of uh, cavalier can, kind of attitude to it, you know, and because it's that's your job, you know. And you do, of course, you're nervous, you go, but you, but now uh, looking, you know, you know that catalog, and I just uh, looked through the uh, the exhibit, the way it was hung and the way it was lit. I was I. I, it, it felt something really warm, to, to my, the, the feelings in my heart, because I really, that's why that's why I love I love this f- form of art. That's beautiful. I mean, this is not just a, a beautiful um, record and interpretation of dance in Argentina and in India. It is a reminder to yourself and to us what is beautiful about it. Well, that's you put it uh, uh, more eloquently than I I, I tried. To. <laughs> I'm not going to charge you that <laughs> much. I'm not going. You know what? I, I'm sure whatever you got in your wallet is fine. You know that's a, that's fine by me. <laughs> My guest is uh, Mikhail Varishnikov. Listen, we we don't have to talk about this. We don't. We, we can we can talk about it as much as you want to, or okay. not as much as you want to. It did occur to me that we're in Toronto. I'm talking to you in Toronto. Yeah. That's meaningful. Toronto is a meaningful and how city. I just passed the you know, former uh, uh, O'Keeffe Center, <laughs> which was really now uh, named twice by different names. But I remember that evening, of course. This is that was where you when you defected. That was where. Yeah, from from O'Keeffe Center. I should be clear when you defected from the Soviet Union in 1974, <laughs> 26 years old. So what did you feel when you drove? When you when you uh, uh, it's called Meridian Hall now. It was called the Sony Center and the O'Keeffe Center. What did you feel when you saw it? Uh, right now, yeah. When you when you drove past it, you no, know, I was just thinking, you know, your prime minister of Canada was three years old when it's happened. Life is long, and I was really lucky to live that long, you know. And uh, that was uh, uh, Toronto was, was such a important place and important first f- few very close friends who were involved in in my although i don't like this word defection oh i'm sorry i didn't know you did. i mean i didn't know no no no, no but no. Uh, you know that it, it, it's a kind of military thing it's Defect, an exciting it, word it, it is you defection know. you know i said more like selection you know that's, that's a civilized world so i select that country to live it's not necessary you know uh, uh you know, look at the uh, open in New York uh, t- uh, uh, tennis, yeah? They're in Canada, but they are Fernandez, you know, or uh, the, the, the different names, uh, you know, that uh, young lady from uh, England, uh, you know, her, her parents came from different parts of the world, you know, and this. Yeah, but and they now, weren't on stage in front of thousands of people when they made their call, you know? Uh, well... <laughs> uh, 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 well, but uh, indeed, it was a very important uh, place. It's my life in the West started from this city. Were you afraid? A bit. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Well, there was no way out. You know, I'm, uh, I, uh, I made up my mind and uh, I had... Uh, Forever, thank people who were involved in, in helping me to to make it. Mm. I can't imagine. I mean, I didn't know you were so young when I was reading. About I was twenty six. Yeah, mm. that's that's a lot of it's your. It's not that young, you know. It's not that old. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, it, what I, what I, the last thing I'll say about it is that it's, it's clear to me when I read about your, your um, for all the political um, 
meaning making that happened around your, we'll say in quotes, defection away from the Soviet Union. You've always been really adamant that it was an artistic decision, that it was about your craft. Yeah, but, and yet, you know, I wanted to work with the people uh, whom were not necessarily just uh, Russian choreographers. Uh, I wanted to, I want to be uh, men of the world and I want to learn a couple of more languages, you know, to speak to people on their own language sometimes, or it's French or it's in English, or at that time I spoke a, a, quite a bit of a German, you know, and I, uh, I, that's what I wanted. But it was, I was never a, a dissident, I hated that country was like uh, probably three quarters of the Russian population hates their government, and yet they cannot live without them, you know. I, I, I'm repeating this sort of dichotomy, kind of, uh, I, I was grow up under Joseph Stalin, I ran away from Brezhnev, and I fin finish up under the Donald Trump. When people say, why are you not going back to visit? And said, why well, have to go visit Vladimir Putin, who puts people in prison for that, the, 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 uh, saying something word about him? I, I, I'm not going there, you know. And that's... Uh, uh, yeah, and that's that. Is it more exciting now, given that the internet has really brought dance styles to anyone, anywhere? You know, I was thinking about that, that if you are in Toronto through YouTube or through various, you know, websites, you can view dance styles. You can even be instructed on dance by people all over the world. Very different than when you started. It's a different world right now. It's a different world, you know. Like I, I was working during the the last year and a half uh, through digitally through the, the to, to my office, to my people to do some commissions and working with artists, uh, uh, planning for a future. And, uh, and I'm not, I, I barely know how to send the email, you know, I'm, I'm not a person, uh, you know, it's like in my photography, I'm not a technical, uh, by when uh, some photographers who come to see, and the good photographers, they said, how the hell you did that? You know, they said, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just fooling around and take a thousands of pictures and you know and I'm I know I know how to achieve certain uh, 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 elements in, in my photography but what's important to 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 capture that uh, uh, that emotion uh, uh, and that which is separates uh, you know good dancer with just a dancer. But how do you see the the uh, level of access that we have right now to dance, dance styles, and dance instruction all over the world through the internet? How do you see that kind of access changing the world of contemporary dance? Well, it is it's a it's a quick education, I think, for choreographers, and and uh, and uh, and to see people. From where from from China or or Peru or uh, you know Venezuela, uh, dance who really love dance they 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 go to the to online and uh, and uh, you know on YouTube you know and uh, and see anything what's available and it's self a lot of people uh, self taught. Uh, through the, that technology, who cannot afford, or have been rejected, and then proven later to the, the people who reject them that they succeeded, which is really uh, a kind of uh, wonderful. But they must be really feel uh, proud. You seem. I was going to ask you how you how you were feeling about dance in 2021, but it seems you're you're feeling good about it. 
Yeah, they feel good about it, but not necessarily that there are um, uh, that many really extraordinary choreographers. Really? Because this generation of, 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 of uh, people who were a, a, a top shell, uh, uh, extraordinary visionaries uh, like uh, uh, George Balanchine, uh, Sir Frederick Ashton, or uh, the Kenneth Macmillan, uh, uh, just name it, Martha Graham. Um, it, it's still, there's a lot of uh, uh, wonderful uh, uh, young names and who are practicing and having their companies and this and that. But uh, it remains, still remains to be seen as how they would break the uh, break the glass ceilings, but to create a new, uh, uh, like John Cage, open uh, a road for to so many uh, musicians and and uh, composers, and uh, it's the same with dance. Uh, the same, the same with the theater directors, you know, or painters, you know. It's a, uh, it, it, it is a different era, you know, and and uh, it's a rem again it remains to be seen. And uh, uh, it would take some couple of generations, maybe twenty years, to see to identify uh, our leaders. Uh, um, in, in uh, it, because commercialism uh, uh, eliminated a, a lot of uh, um, uh, artists, took them off the stage of creativity. They are working for a uh, the business, or it's a Broadway, or it's a big productions, or a movies. Uh, which is a, a potentially a big a financial uh, reward, you know, because uh, look, all the people which I, I named, uh, they were working for nothing. They, they never made any money, maybe in, in exception, somebody like Jerome Robbins, who started to, to do, uh, do Broadway work. Uh, but... Uh, He's a person whom he worked for, and he's Kumir, uh, you know, who's a person who he totally, uh, uh, I was like, uh, George Balanchine never had any financial really? fortune. No, no. Uh, he didn't care about uh, his wealth or uh, uh, charging a lot of money for his creations. No, it was... Uh, you're right. So in order to foster that next great choreographer, they need to be supported to do so because the incentive is not to do that. The incentive is to work in more commercial space. Yes, yes. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, can I play you something and it has nothing to do with your dance career? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Do you always eat this late at night? I usually work all night. For me, it's not late. You work all night painting? Yeah, painting, sculpture, whatever. I have a bit of an art question. As you know, Alexander... Alexander. Oh. Alexander. Alexander. Say Alec. Alec. Alexander. Alexander. Call me Bob. <laughs> Talk about it for very long. <laughs> Do we have to? No. They're I only just, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I had, uh, I had uh, the lovely memories about that, you know, and uh, it was hard work. A Sex in the City? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, because I was a rookie, you know, uh, and they were already probably six, seven years doing the same roles. They were like, they didn't separate themselves through the, the person they were playing, you know, the Sarah Jessica in the... In the the rest, uh, and I, uh, you have to work long hours, and uh, you could really have a great 
memory because the writers, there are 10 writers sitting and then changing your text right on the fly, you know, and they said, no, you better, this doesn't work like that, but uh, there is a, uh, a list, do you have 20 minutes to think and we could really do it, that's, that's a pressure, you know. I should, I should be clear for people here. My guest, Mikhail Baryshnikov, um, that's his role as the Russian Alexander in Sex in the City, one of Carrie Bradshaw's most well-known love interests on the show. This is what I wanted to know about it. Mm. You have had an enviable career by any stretch of the imagination to anyone involved or even a passing knowledge of dance. To some people with the most fleeting knowledge of dance, you are the most, you are the only dancer they know. They know your name before, I mean, I think I knew your name before I knew anything about dance. Mm. <laughs> how, how is it that some people these days might know you for, for Sex in the City? That, uh, I'm not wrong that, either, that, am I? That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> that's sad. I must admit. <laughs> it must happen, though. I'm sure people... You know, Absolutely. Wonder. Help me see... Let me, let me close off this way. Help me see dance through your eyes. When we look at the photographs, you said something so beautiful earlier when you were talking about how these photographs of, of dancers in Argentina and in India at this exhibit we're talking about right now, they reminded you of what you loved about dance after a lifetime in it. That's going to stick with me forever. It's going to remind me to try and remember why I'm doing what I'm doing and why I love doing what I'm doing, you know? What do you want people to see in dance when they look at these photos? Like, what do I see in Fred Astaire's dance? It's... Uh, the style, kind of panache, perfection, and total dedication, and uh, and that willing, willing, uh, uh, willingness to share this excitement with the audience, and uh, like. Um, Martha Graham, again, I'm repeating, repeating, this, uh, she used to say, body cannot lie. Body cannot lie. The way you speak, it's like timbre of your voice. It's unique in the world. That's, you know, you cannot fake it. You know, it's like a prelude when the, uh, uh, the ghoul is playing his buck his touch and even even humming you know him you know uh and it's so uh him or composers the prelude it's a clear that it's shostakovich or chopin or uh, uh, you know uh, uh, or any it is something belongs to your dna you know uh, and uh, and again, your your generosity it is uh, ignite the same hopefully feeling across the uh, the audience to in, into the ears of uh, and eyes of uh, of the audience or a listener or a viewer, you know. It, that really truly does come across in these in these photographs, and uh, sorry, uh, th that really does come across in these photographs. Thank you. You know, thank I, you. I do see it. Uh, it's 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 a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for for coming thank in. Thank you very much. M my guest was uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov. His photo exhibition, "Looking for the Dance: The Photography of Mikhail Baryshnikov," is on now at the Lighthouse Art Space here in Toronto. We'll post a link uh, so you can check that out at CPC Radio Q. He joined me here in person in our Q studio.